Hello guys, this is Sarnik. In the last video, we had learned about the input statement, about boolean values, about loops, about the NOT operator, about try and accept blocks of code, and about formatted strings in Python. In this video, we are going to discuss about libraries and the math library in specific. So what is a library in Python? Well, a library in Python is something that gives you extra functions or extra features which you could not use previously in python so well how do you use a library well, first you have to make sure that it is installed using pip and then you can import it into your code using the following sentence import and then the library name in this case math so this segment will import the math library from wherever it is installed now if you want to import only a specific function from a whole library and not the whole library, you can use the from statement. So from and then the library name that is in this case from math and then import the name of the function like copy sign for example. Okay. So if you used the first statement of importing the math library over here you would have to write something like math dot copy sign and access the other features and functions of the math library but if you used the third sentence you could just type in copy sign wherever you want to use the function and python would know exactly what you're doing now there's another way to import the whole library that is from the library name that is math import and then an asterisk now over here the asterisk does not mean multiplication it means all so from math import all which is what we are going to be using today so the first function we are going to be looking at is the copy sign function okay so what is this function well to first know what the function is we must call the function and how do you call a function? Well, since we have used from math import all, we could just type copy sign. This function, now if you notice, takes two parameters, that is two numbers, okay? So let's just give in two random numbers. Basically, what copy sign does is it takes the sign of the first number, I mean the second number, and the absolute value of the first number okay sign of the second absolute value of the first so if we were to run this program this copy sign function over here would return the result 21 okay so positive sign from 45 and 21 the absolute value from 21 now if we change the sign of 45 to negative then this copy sign function would return negative 21 okay still confused well let's test out the program okay remember it should print out negative 21 right now onto the terminal negative 21 sign of the second absolute value of the first so that's the negative sign and 21 okay see there you go we see a decimal number that is negative 21.0 because the copy sign function returns a decimal number. Now if we remove the negative sign from 21, we still get the same result. Okay, sign of the second absolute value of the first, remember. Now the second function we are looking at today is the factorial function. Okay, so what is the factorial function in maths? Well, if you don't know about that, it's like this suppose you have any random number like let's take 5 okay the factorial of 5 is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 okay so basically every number between 1 and 5 including those two numbers the product of all these numbers is the factorial of 5 okay we don't include any extra numbers like 6 or 0 in this multiplication okay so in maths, factorial is in fact represented by an exclamation mark. In Python, we use the exclamation mark somewhere else. That's your job to find it out. Okay. So instead, we use the factorial function. 
You see, now this function takes just one parameter, one number. Okay, let's just pass it a random parameter like 5. So, we should see 120 on the terminal. Okay, see, negative 21. That's the result of the copy sign function. And 120 is the result of the factorial function. Okay, so uh, that's it for the factorial function. Now, let's look at the f sum function. Now, suppose you want to calculate or add... That's what the fsum function does. You want to add some floating point numbers, or as we call them in maths, decimals, like 1.23 plus 4.56 plus, let's take 7.21, okay? Sometimes you may not get confused, and you may say, oh, what an easy num what an easy question. And same thing for Python, okay? Sometimes it might not get confused. But other times, if you have large number of digits after the decimal points like this number over here and uh, this number over here and you want to add them many times you can get confused and same thing happens with python if you use normal addition but if you use this special fsum function especially designed for the addition of decimal point numbers or floating point numbers whatever you call them then you will get the precision result okay so you pass an iterable to it that is a list and then in the list you could have your floating point numbers like 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.5 for example okay now this should return the result 1.2 if we are correct okay now these are just small decimal point numbers you can use big ones if you want and you will get the exact result of the addition. There you go, 1.2. So, the fsum function helps in precision addition of decimal point numbers or floating point numbers. Okay? You pass a list of floating point numbers to it and it adds them. Now, the fourth function, or well, I would not say function, the fourth variable that comes with the math library is the pi variable okay so pi in mathematics is 3.1415 that's its short value or 355 pi 113 it's decimal value it's fractional value okay so if you were to use pi as a function like given over here this should in fact raise an error there you go we see an error we see the type error float object is not callable so Python says that pi over here is not a function. Remember, it's supposed to be used as normal pi over here. Okay, you're not supposed to eat it though, remember that. There you go. We get the precision value of pi. Okay, now remember, if you're not using this statement from math import asterisk, that is all, and if you're using import math, for example, then instead of writing copy sign factorial in fsum you would have to write math dot copy sign and math dot factorial math dot fsum okay so what we learned in this video we learned about importing about the copy sign factorial and fsum functions 